This is part of a series of videos showing you how to spot some common problems within your NLP model and how to fix them. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the negative effect of having two or more intents that have very similar utterances in your model and how to fix the problem to avoid confusion. You may see this problem in your bot if it's consistently returning the correct intent but with low confidence or it's consistently returning the same incorrect intent or it could be a combination of both symptoms. This is a small model. Um, it's built for an event and has just 27 intents. It's built on Microsoft Lewis, but it could be a model on any other NLP provider. It has intents about the event agenda, how many attendees, who will be the audience, the cost, accessibility, and various other intents covering questions people will ask about an event. Now I've noticed that I seem to have a bit of an issue with my event suitability intent. So this one covers questions about who the event is targeting, who it's suitable for and who it's aimed at. However, if I ask questions such as, is this event useful for a business audience? Or is this more for a business audience? These questions are returning my event suitability intent. However, with really low confidence, um, especially for the, for the second question. And then if I ask, is the event aimed at me? Or who is the event aimed at? These questions are returning the incorrect intent, event audience. And if you look at the second question, it's 88% confident that this incorrect intent too. So my event audience intent covers questions about who will be in the audience and who will be coming to the event. If I look at the training data for my event suitability intent, we can clearly see utterances about who the event is useful for, for a business audience, and who it is aimed at. But we can see from these examples that my model is confused. So it's unable to clearly distinguish between my suitability intent and my event audience intent, and therefore will provide my users with either a low confidence response or even worse, respond with the incorrect answer in the case of this one, if, if my confidence threshold was um, set to, say, for example, 65%. So to try to understand why my training data doesn't enable my bot to behave the way I hoped, I could run a cross-validation test set, look at the results of the test, and then build a confusion matrix as well, and analyze those results. But for this, I will use QBox, as it's faster and gives me more insight. For those who don't know, QBox enables you to test, understand and improve your chatbot's accuracy and performance, all in a matter of minutes, giving you 100% confidence to deploy. It allows you to see the status at intent level, which reduces the need for trial and error and enables faster development with better results. To run a test in QBox, I export my training data file from Lewis in the form of a JSON file and create a new test in the QBox create test area. I need to name my test and then upload my JSON file here. And QBox knows that it's a Microsoft Lewis model. And then I just click on create test. We have some helpful videos that go into detail how to do this. And in fact, at every stage and on every page in QBox, there are help videos. The test took a couple of minutes to run, so I've skipped that part and I'll show you the results. So on the overview page, we can see the overall model scores are 64 for correctness, 70 for confidence and 83 for clarity. Now these scores are out of 100, so they're okay, but not a great result. A good model will score in the 90s. Uh, there are information buttons here explaining what these scores mean, as well as a help video up here explaining the features on this overview page. On the score di distribution graph, we can see several intents shown in red. So this means that their intent scores for correctness are below 50. And there's quite a few in orange too. Ideally, we'd want all intents to be more at this end of the graph in the 70 plus bracket. We also have graphs for intent confidence and intent clarity scores. Let's go to our list of intents in the Intents tab. This list contains all my intents in my model with each of their individual 
correctness, confidence and clarity intent scores. The intent I'm having problems with is here, my event suitability intent. So we need to get a further analysis of this intent. So we'll click into it and um, I'm going straight into advanced view. This intent is scoring 49, 53, 19. So it's pretty bad and there's lots of room for improvement. Clarity is particularly bad. So clarity measures how certain the model is of the top intent which was returned. It's a complex algorithm, but for simplicity, imagine if an utterance is returning the correct intent with the confidence of say 90%, but the second best predicted intent, an incorrect intent, is returned with 88% confidence. Then the model is not very certain about the correct intent, even though the confidence score was high. Poor clarity scores will cause regression further down the line. It may flip these low clarity intents so that the incorrect intent is then returned. Poor clarity could be an indication that you have two or more intents too similar in their training data or utterances. And this is what we call overlapping intents. Let's look at the correctness distribution diagram. Another indication of intents being too similar or when their meanings overlap is a cluster of data points going towards the same incorrect intent, whether in green or in red, as we can see in this case here. So there's five utterances in red, and therefore incorrect, heading towards the event audience intent. The idea of this graph is to have all of the data points, so each data point represents an utterance in this intent, so all data points in green, and within this central circle, and as close to the centre of the circle as possible. The help video here explains more about this diagram. Go into the confidence distribution diagram. So this shows a very similar picture, but concentrates on the confidence scores of each utterance for the correct intent. So as well as some incorrect utterances that need fixing, we also need to improve the confidence on these ones. They're falling outside my circle and this represents my confidence threshold. Over to the clarity diagram. So this shows six utterances with bad clarity. These are mainly the ones that are classed as incorrect in the correctness diagram. And then we have a few with um, very low clarity. We need to aim for all questions to fall into this green area here as this represents more than 30% clarity to avoid future regression. Now, I'll go back to my correctness distribution diagram because correctness is always the first thing to fix when you're trying to fix an intent. So let's look at one of the questions. Who is this event aimed at? So I'll pin this question. So pinning a question adds it to this area here and it just makes it easier to see whether you've made improvements to the question in subsequent tests as it remains pinned. And then I will click on show more or you can just click on the question up here and we should get a better idea of the confusion. So far I got the KPIs at my model level then we drill down to intent level, and now we're looking even more in depth at utterance level. From this diagram, we know this utterance is returning the incorrect event audience intent, and it's a whopping 91% confident. But from this information, we can also see the second best predicted intent is the event speaker's intent, although not very confident at only uh, 5%. My event suitability intent is actually the fifth returned intent with only 1% confidence. So this model is highly confident of an incorrect intent. Under each intent, you will see all of its training data. And each word in my utterance is given a different color. And this gives a good intuition about the word density in all of the training data for each intent. So from the color coded words, we can see the regular occurrences of who and event in both the incorrect intents, as well as insignificant words like is, at, and this. And also we can see there's a very similar utterance. What audience is this event aimed at in my event audience intent? 
by having all of this training data side by side and having the color coded words showing, it makes it easier to analyze what the problem is with my training data. That said, this is more for giving you ideas. But once you think you might have spotted the reason for the problem, you should use the explain tab to get a deeper word by word analysis. So let's go on to that. Now this chart shows each word according to its influence on the prediction. And we can see the biggest influences to return the incorrect intent are the words who and aimed. And there are no strong influences, either positive or negative, for my event suitability intent. Let's go back to the training data tab. Now, whilst I have all the utterances in front of me for all the intents, I can see too many crossovers or similarities here. I can see questions about who the event is targeting and who it's relevant for in both intents. Let's look at another question. So is it going to be relevant for a business audience? This one is 93% confident at predicting the top intent with my suitability intent close behind at 86% confident. Looking at the training data for the incorrect intent, I can see instances of relevant and business audience occurring a few times. Some very similar phrases about the relevance of the um, event. Using the explain tab, I can see the main influences to return the incorrect intent are the words relevant and audience. These words are strong influences for my event suitability intent too. And so this is the likely cause of confusion. Both intents have very similar training data. Now, we can also see it's creating some false positives here. And this is no surprise, it's mainly the same problem intent, my event audience intent. If we go to that intent, again, we can see the clusters of data points for the incorrect event suitability intent. All of this needs to be fixed. And in this particular case, my best course of action is to ensure I only have training data about who the event is aimed at, who it's relevant for in my event suitability intent and ensure the event audience intent only covers question about who will be in the audience and who will be coming. This could be tricky as there are only subtle differences between the two intents, but I do want to keep both the intent separate and have two separate answers. So with careful training, this should be doable. In some cases, it might be impossible to separate the two intents clearly enough. And the best course of action would be to merge the two intents and just provide the user with one answer which covers all aspects of those utterances. So I'll work to fix the two questions we pinned first. It's always advisable just to fix a couple of problem questions at a time, then run, run another test through QBox to validate those fixes and also ensure it hasn't caused any regression elsewhere in your model before you move on to fix another couple of questions. So I'll go back to my Lewis model, go to my event audience intent, and I'll move all the training data to do with who the event is being aimed at to my event suitability intent here. And I'll also do the same for all the training data to do with who the event is relevant for. And then once I've done that, I can run another test in QBox so that I can validate all those changes. I've already done this for quickness and we can go through the results now. So we can see the overall model scores have improved to 66 for correctness, 71 for confidence and 86 for clarity. And we can now see some extra info here. The direct changes area lists the largest changes in scores to intents where I have directly influenced them by adding new training data or removing it in the case of the event audience intent. And we can see some great improvements to all of our scores for the suitability intent, as well as some small improvements to the audience intent. And then moving over to the right, we've got a largest indirect or unknown changes area. And this is where we've changed training data elsewhere in the model. And this is the impact it's had on other intents, either positively or negatively, as in regression. 
and this shows the intents with the largest indirect or unknown score changes. And most of these changes are positive with a couple of minor regressions here, but we can look further at this shortly. So let's go back to my suitability intent and the questions I pinned are now both in green on the correctness distribution graph. You can see they are slightly brighter green and the confidence and clarity scores are good. So we've confirmed that we fixed these two questions and we can then move on to fixing the next couple of questions shown in red on the correctness distribution diagram. The next thing to check is how my fixes have affected other intents in my model. So I'll go back to the overview page and then into the change analysis tab here. So there's three graphs here for correctness, confidence and clarity. And these show all the intents where their scores have changed from my initial test. So the correctness graphs shows five intents where their correctness scores have improved. So the white dot shows the score in my previous test and the green is the current score. So as well as our intent we fixed, which is uh, this one here, we have improved the correctness to other intents. And we have one intent in red, which means that there is a regression, but it looks uh, only very small on the graph. So we can confirm this by looking at the list below. This, this gives all the details of the intents that have had their score changes. And this is the regressed one. So it's only 1%, so absolutely nothing to worry about. But we can see some good increases in correctness to the other, those other intents. And then the confidence graph shows three other intents improving slightly in confidence and two regressions. But again, they look small and they are here in the list. So, yeah, only small ones. And then moving on to the clarity graph, this shows our intent that we fixed, showing the great increase in clarity and quite a few other intents whose scores have increased. And again, we can see some ones in red, um, so they've decreased, but again, these are small, so there's no concerns here. I would suggest if you do have any regressions of, say, 10% or more in any scores, take a look at these and try to fix them um, before moving on to any other fixes in your model. To summarise, you notice your bot is consistently returning the same incorrect intent or consistently returning the correct intent, but with a low confidence. So you run your models through QBox. You then see the problem intents with very low clarity scores. And after a further deep dive, you also see clusters of data points on your correctness distribution graphs going to an incorrect intent. This is a strong indication you have overlapping intents and you'll have to do a lot of careful training to ensure the set of utterances for each intent is very clearly defined and separated from each other to avoid any confusion. But if the two overlapping intents are both covering very similar subjects, the best course of action would probably be to merge those two intents into just one.